special little treat. I have two of my friends with me. They're also family members, but we're going to keep their identity secret because stranger danger, internet, safety, all of those type of things, and they're under the age of 18. So they're also going to share fake names. They're both avid Harry Potter fans, so we wanted to talk about why they like Harry Potter. We're just going to have a co fun conversation about Harry Potter. So do you want to introduce yourselves with yes. your fake names and also give me your age, how old you are? Like the real age? Your real age. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. So I... I am Emily Emma Jewelerstein, and I am seven years old. Awesome. I am Kimberly Claire Oaks, oh. <laughs> and I am 11 years old. Amazing. And so can you tell me about Harry Potter? So when did you start reading it or listening to it? I think I listened to it when I was like starting like six or when I was like still this age. Oh, yeah? Well, how did you listen to it? Audible. Audible. Cool. Okay, what so, about you? I start, I read the first four books when I was like nine, but then it got a little bit terrifying, so <laughs> I finished up the books this year. Okay, so why do you like these books? You can both answer, whatever you want. Well, like you learn how to do stuff and there's important lessons in it. Like what? Like, um, you should always help people and like never be mean. Whoa, those are really good lessons. How did you learn those lessons in that book? Was there an example? There was an example of being mean of Draco Malfoy. Yeah, and what was an example of being nice? Um, I think Jenny and Ron. Yeah, Jenny and Ron are very nice people. What about you, Kimberly? What was the question? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember. Why do you like the books? Well, I think I want a very, really interesting thing about the books is that literally adults and children can read them and both enjoy them. Yeah. In different mm -hmm. ways. Because, like, they don't get old, really. No. They're all really different. Yeah. Yeah. What characters are your favorites? I love... So, this is mine. I really like Jenny Weasley, and I also really like Hermione. Yeah? Well, I love the twins because... Their just version of humor is just hilarious. Oh, it's yeah. Like, it's so random and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I also forgot that I love the twins because they, like, make up the Weasleys, witches, weasels, and they're, like, Wizards. So funny. Wizards, and it's, like, so funny because they build a joke shop and they're tricking first years. <laughs> What's your favorite joke in the book? Yeah. Um, I really like, um, wait, are you, we, we're all worried that for you know who, you should be worried out, you know poo, the constipation <laughs> sensation that's gripping the nation. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah, so you like all the potty jokes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's the only reference they make, but it's in the sixth book, and it's when the Weasleys are all, vis like, they're visiting Friend George's mm -hmm. joke shop. And what happens is, is that Mrs. Weasley and Harry and Ron and them, they're walking into their mm -hmm. shop, and they see this big sign saying, you're all worried about you-know-who, you should be worried about you-know-poo, the constipation <laughs> sensation that's gripping the nation. <laughs> and what happens is that Miss Weasley's saying that they're going to get killed by Lord Voldemort, while everyone else is crapping, cracking up. And that's what's <laughs> hilarious about it. That is really funny. Was Lord Voldemort too scary for you, do you think? Well, I think that the well, scariest book was by far the second book and the fourth book because, yeah. I mean, the seventh book, like, you kind of just knew that Harry was going to win almost. Yeah. You just kind of had that feeling of hope. And just the fourth one, it just came as such a surprise. Well, and the um, second one, it's like this giant snake was going to attack you, so. Yeah, that was scary. Yeah, yeah like, um, the only thing I, well, I don't like of certain things of Lord Voldemort is that he does not have a name. <laughs> and the other thing that's creepy about the book is that He's apparently this book um spoiler here um she spoiled to me that Harry that Dumbledore dies which is very sad and Harry um dies then comes back to life that's very very weird and a little bit scary <laughs> it is it is Coley, so what you need to put spoiler alert on here i will i will definitely put spoiler alerts for all the people that spoiler haven't read the books alert. so this is a question i have for you so there's a lot of different places and different parents who 
are saying that no one should be allowed to read Harry Potter. Why? I know. Do you agree with that, or do you think it's important to read it? What do you think? Because well, there's no like, right or wrong answer here. Everybody gets to decide what they, I'm like, want to read. Like, if it's, like, rule-breaking, like, against the law, then, like, don't read it. But if it's, like, well, I know that no um, author would do that. But yeah. everybody has a choice to read any book they want. They can read Harry Potter. It's just fine. Yeah. So I get what they mean in some areas. Like, you don't want your kindergartner that's, like, maybe really advanced in reading mm -hmm. to be reading a book like that because maybe their minds aren't really used yeah. to that yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I get that, but it's, like, I feel like if you're, like, in middle school or elementary, you should be allowed to. I mean, it shouldn't be, like, well, you can't bring a book in. I feel like you should be yeah. allowed to bring, like, Harry Potter in. I mean, having it at the school, it kind of just depends on the principal, but, Yeah. I just feel like as long as it's, like, in, like, a as more long mature as it, school yeah. district, then, yeah. Yeah. So it kind of depends on the kid. Yeah. Yeah, if it's, saying. like, a preschooler and they have a really good comprehension, that I don't think so. <laughs> but if it's a kindergarten, well, it's, like, kind of, like, if you're really brave and stuff, like, yeah. you can, your comprehension's really good, then maybe. Like, if you're a first grader or a second grade, first grade or up, I think you could. Yeah. I think that that is, so it really does depend on the kid, huh? Yes. Yeah. So my last question for you is, what big lessons have you learned from this book? So you, I don't remember your name. I am Emily. <laughs> Emily, Emily. 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 Thank you. Emily. <laughs> you shared that a big lesson was to be nice. Mm -hmm. What other lessons have you guys learned from Ooh. reading these books? Well, it's how your parents are always near, like people who have died. Mm -hmm. They're always near. They're always close. Yeah, like when Cedric Diggory died, it was all he was always close to like what's her name again? Cho Chang. Yeah, she really liked Cedric, but he's still always always close to her. Yeah, memories. Um, another one that I was thinking was um Harry's parents, Lily and James, where it's like. If you've noticed that, like, when Harry feels the most let down or, like, he's in, like, the hardest of situations, he sees his parents and, like, they make him feel better and happier. Just in the most yeah. amazing way. So I think that people... Yeah. They're Another one is probably that... Work makes the dream work. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> you could see, like, the way in, like, the seventh book that, um, that the Gryffindors, Ravenclaws... And Hufflepuff said, like, they all had to group together in order to mm -hmm. fight Voldemort. Yeah. It, they, not one group could have done it alone, huh? Yeah. yeah. Not, even like, the, not even the Gryffindors, who <laughs> may be a little bit of a show-off, but... <laughs> okay, final question. Oh, did you have something else to say, Emily? Yes. Okay, go ahead. So, like, Dumbledore's army, they had to train before they even acted. Before, like, that, oh, like... Preparing. Yeah, they had to prepare. That is so true. So we can't just jump into stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, Harry... He kind of jumps into yeah. things. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a different story. But, uh, yeah. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, which... Final question. Which house would you each be in? Hufflepuff. And why? Uh, I would be in Hufflepuff or... Um, Gryffindor. No. Gryffindor? Gryffindor, yeah. Yeah. Okay, why? For each of you. Well, I would be in Hufflepuff. I mean, they'd all be kind of fun. Well, except Slytherin in some ways or another because... Ravenclaw, I don't know, but when, like, you get into, like, the dormitory, uh, you have to answer a riddle in order to get in. Yeah. And I feel like that would be fun. But, I mean, I'm not too keen on, like, the whole Ravenclaw idea, but I kind of just like that yeah. aspect. Um, yeah. But here's the thing. Gryffindor, it feels like they have to fight Lord Voldemort every single year. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, from what you said, at least. Yeah. Like, they have to fight it every year, and it just seems kind of annoying. You'd be like, well, this summer I'm going to fight... Lord Voldemort, and I'd be like, I just don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so, I, I just, yeah. I mean, sure, Gryffindor seems kind of fun and everything, but yeah. But Hufflepuff, they're just, and they match my personality traits a lot better. They're loyal, just and kind, but they're, and it's like they'll help and need. Yeah. But it's like they're not really show off -y or like show off of their smarts, things like that. Yeah. Like that. That's cool. Well, like, you why know I chose it. these things is, like, because, like, I am some of those. Like, I am a little bit of, like, the, 
like a little bit daring sometimes and yeah. like I'm a, I'm really brave and like I am really kind of generous. Yeah. And smart. And smart. I could totally see you as Gryffindor and I could totally see you as Hufflepuff. I could totally see this. I love this. Well, I got what about Ravenclaw. Now we have some <laughs> questions for you. Okay, what are your questions? Yeah. What lessons have you learned? Turn the tables. Ooh, I think a big lesson is, yeah, as long as you're loyal to your friends, they will always have your back. I think that's a big thing. I care about my friends a lot, and I think I learned a lot about that from Harry Potter, is that I need to take care of them and rely on them. Yeah. Yeah. What is your approach to the parents and everything saying that? I think it's like what you guys said. I think it depends on the kid. I also think that, yeah, it's a little bit scary, but there's a lot of really scary things in life. And I think that if you can learn how to, that you can defeat scary stuff, it's a good lesson, you know? Yeah, like there's always hope. There's always hope. Exactly. And there's such a big team of goodness and good always wins. Like especially Dumbledore's in Harry Potter. Army. Yeah. Dumbledore's yeah. Army. Yeah, and also sometimes there's a lot more going on in everyone's lives than we actually think. Like Neville Longbottom's life. Yeah. His parents was, were, you know, no, were in that asylum. Actually, they did not die. They didn't die. But they it was really sad. They just can't remember him. No, it's so heartbreaking. And what Dumbledore was doing on the side of being the principal or whatever, headmaster. Headmaster, You know, he yeah. was going and, and trying to get all of the, what are those things called? Um, poor poor cruxes. cruxes. Yeah, like everyone has a backstory, including Hagrid, and everybody has all these things that are going like on. It's just his, hard. Like, like he's part giant, and his mom was a giant. Yeah, and the spider like stuff. Like the fact that Dumbledore had lost his brother and his sister. Yeah. Sorry, his mom and his sister. So sad. And also Severus Snape's story. Like everyone has a story. There's always something more oh, going on than what we Harry's, see. Oh, and Hermione's and Ron's. Yeah, seriously, um, they all had stories too. It was crazy. Okay, so, any other questions for me? what house would you like to be in? I'd like to be in Ravenclaw because I like the colors, and <laughs> I like the smarts, and I like the fact that, once again, they don't have to battle Gryffindor all alone. <laughs> I mean, they don't have to battle Lord Voldemort and all the <laughs> Death Eaters here. every year. So, <laughs> yeah, I like that. They kind of get to stay under the surface, but they're cool. What character would you be if you um, were in there? If I was in the book, I would be... Oh, yeah, don't forget. I think I'd want to be one of the Quidditch players. Oh. I don't want to be Ginny Weasley because she ends up being a chaser. So she yeah, still gets to do Ginny's animals. so cool in the book. Yeah. What about you? I don't know. I need to think Would about it. Would you be Looney Lovegood? I think Luna is very, is I very real. Looney. Yeah, Looney Luna. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd want to be Professor McGonagall, to be honest. Yeah. She's cool. I think she's so she's cool. cool. I love her. Yeah. Don't forget about that letter that you sent in to J.K. Oh, Rowling. my goodness. Yeah. I told these two about how I sent in a letter to J.K. Rowling when I was in fourth grade asking if I could be Luna Lovegood. Or fifth. And, or fifth grade. I'm not sure if it was fourth or fifth. And... J.K. Rowling wrote me back. Well, her intern probably did. But I got a picture of J.K. Rowling, and it was signed. And I have that in my parents' bedroom. I mean, not my parents' bedroom. My <laughs> room. My childhood bedroom in my parents' house. That'd be weird if my parents <laughs> kept it in their bedroom. <laughs> I'm, like, framed above their wedding picture. But, yeah. So, so I really wanted to be in those movies. And I had, like, a vid video that my sister filmed of me, my younger sister. So she would have been, like, in first grade when she was, was filming it. it um, and I was, like, performing. Karina? It was Karina. Yeah, and I was performing in, like, a British accent doing, like, an Anna Green Gables monologue. It was so bad. <laughs> but very cute, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, anything else? Ooh, how about we all try out our British accents? All right. Hello. 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 Weather for weather be cold. Weather for weather, weather be hot. We're we'll together whatever, whatever the weather, 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 whether we like it or not. What is that from? Um, mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a okay, I think that. Burn This Book is produced by us, Nicola Corin and Eden Wen. Music written by me, Nicola Corin, and produced and performed by my dad, Frank.